Hello everyone. Um, well, I don't see um, high attendance from the Chris team members, but I'd like to start from agenda bashing and confirmation of action items. Um, Herman, as I expressed on the chat, um, would you mind to send a reminder to the Christine mailing list that we're having a call at the moment? I do recall that um, Nurani did acknowledge that there's going to be a call and she didn't say that she did actually seem to have intended to attend the call. Um, so let's start and uh, welcome everyone. It's been a while since the last Christ call. And uh, welcome also to um, our observers. Um, to take a look at the action items, um, so to go through the agenda bashing, um, first go through the action items as usual. And this time, in addition to the minutes from the last call, um, I think Paul Randick um, has volunteered to um, draft the IPR principle from the number community perspective. Um, I would like to follow up with him if he was here, but um, it seems he's not here. Um, so maybe we'll leave it. Um, we will leave this action item as still open ended. And there are a couple of things that I'd like to um, highlight for this call. One is the status on IPR. So in addition to the IPR principles, there has been um, a post on the IANA plan mailing list. Um, about the IHF Trust's um, plan on the way forward. So I'd like to share a little bit about this and um, hear any feedback that you may have. Um, and of course, as agenda item four, we all know that the ICG um, has closed its public comments. Uh, so it would be good to confirm the status, share any observations about the feedback received. And there also has been a request um, from an ICG member to share the status of um, implementation for the number community proposal. So I'd like to consult you on how we will proceed. And then, um, uh, as I have shared on the mailing list uh, today, um, the GAO report, the US Government Accountability Office report on the INS stewardship transition is now available. So um, if we have any observations, it would be good to discuss it here, as well as um, any corrections on the facts relevant to the numbers community if there is any um, that needs a correction. And lastly, um, I'd like to start preparation on communication um, on the number community proposal or implementation status um, for the Congress hearing um, that's happening in November, I believe, as well as the coming ICANN meeting in Dublin in October. So that's pretty much uh, what I'd like to cover for this meeting. And uh, let's see if people have any other suggestions for the agenda. If not, uh, let's move to um, confirmation of the, min uh, the action item 2A, uh, minutes from the last call. Um, Either Haman or um, Loriana, would you be able to um, share the status? I'm sorry, Nurani. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, Sumi. I'm still working on those. Okay, sure. Um, understood. And I believe there's a couple of um, minutes that um, I think that has been circulated on the CRISP team list and probably waiting for my confirmation. Um, would you please post them on the website and because um, I think it would be good to have this available for um, the community to take a look on their website. Um, and. Maybe I'll follow up on the email about what minutes are already posted, what minutes are waiting to be posted, but the draft has been circulated and what's still waiting for um, for the draft. So, um, yeah, may I actually request for this uh, status update from the NRO Secretariat about the minutes? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll send that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. 
Excellent. Thanks, Herman. Um, and thank you also for um, posting reminder on the Crispine mailing list. Um, and then um, let's go to action 2B. So the IPR principles, but I suppose, um, well, um, it's not yet being circulated um, on the Crispine list. So I'll send a, a, a follow-up individually uh, to Paul Randick as well. So on um, a status on IPR, um, as I've mentioned earlier, on the IETF plan mailing list, um, there has been a plan shared from the IETF trust um, on how we would start considering the implementation of the IPR. And the idea that they have suggested is for each of the operational communities to exchange um, an agreement um, with the IETF trust on how um, the intellectual property rights will be handled to ensure that um, IETF trust, if they will be agreed as the holder of the IPR, uh, act accountable to um, each of the operational communities. Um, so that's the basic idea behind it, and um, and I also like to um, know, um, Michael, whether the RIR lawyers have had time to um, review this. I believe this has been around for some time, and it's not. I mean, my impression is it's nothing too new. But um, do you have any observations about this, uh, Michael? Um, if not, um, well, does anybody else, um, I think, um, I think from the Chris team, it's Esteban, um, who's here at the call. If not, then, um, maybe we can start, um, brainstorming on, um, the IPR principles. So uh, one of the things that we have already clarified is that um, it's um, this holder of the intellectual property rights should not be the IANA numbering services operator. So it should be independent from the IFO um, and that um, this entity should be able to facilitate a smooth transition of license and permissions um, to another operator in the future. Uh, this is real, one of the key elements as a part of the accountability. And of course, uh, we'd also like to ensure that um, this owner of the IPR will act accountable to each of the operational communities. So instead of um, acting in their own will and decisions, they will actually, the, the decision on how they will manage the IPR will be based on how the operational communities will instruct, uh, which would be um, in addition to what this, um, you know, any of the legal arrangements uh, that's required as the, the holder of the IPR. Um, and so that, that would be, that seems to be the common um, principles that um, that comes to my mind immediately. Um, and possible additional um, principles could be that whether we would want this uh, setting, we would want this to be uh, um, the entity managing the IPR to have the minimum um, additional implementation required. Um, rather than having, I don't know, um, setting up a, an organization that has a lot of uh, bureauc bureaucratic procedures required, for example. I don't know um, that is whether that this is the best way to, to describe it, but um, I think having the minimum impact on uh, preparing implementation could be one of the possible uh, principles. Um, oh, hi. Uh, welcome, Nurani. Um, please. 
Do you see me? Hello, everyone. And apologies for that before um, joining later. I was having some connectivity problems, but I think it's working now. Uh, so apologies also since I don't know if you've already covered it. Um, um, I presume that you uh, also was trying to see what the status was with this principal document that uh, Paul Rendick was working on. Uh, and while I don't know exactly that, I know that there were certainly a few of these principles um, thrown around in the draft. Um, so I think having this, um, I'm happy also to, to check what the status is of this, but I, from my understanding, um, the draft of this uh, document had gone quite far, and, um, but I haven't seen its circulation on the crisp list. Uh, and it contained uh, these principles that, that you talk about, that, um, that it should not be the IANA numbering services operator, that it's an entity independent of the IANA uh, numbering services operator. It does talk about the smooth transition. Um, and I think it also talks about how it ensures that the assets are used in a non-discriminatory manner. Um, and I think so. I think it, I don't remember the exact wording, but it does talk about basically this smooth transition part into um, the lease. I'm not sure if it talks about um, um, minimal, minimal, uh, minimal sort of uh, operational uh, disturbance or or um, something of that matter to to ensure sort of the. The, uh, the stability and the robustness, um, that there's nothing in this process that will interfere with that. Um, but yes, apologies, since, since I don't know what you, um, since I missed the first part about this, this uh, the principles being circulated, uh, I'm also happy to try to reach out and see what, what's happening with that, because I think getting a circulation of that first on the CRISP list would be a, a good first step. Excellent, Nurani. Thank you very much. So I think it would be good to have this circulated hopefully, well, if the end of this week would be too short, or uh, since that's tomorrow, maybe early next week. And um, I think it would be good to have a rough target. Um, since the IANA plan has already, you know, started discussing on some of the implementation um, suggestions, it would be good to have it um, at least an agreement uh, within the CRISP team um, within the coming week, by the end of next week. Um, and then um, as a coming step, I think it, um, it would be good to also share this with the NROEC um, as they will be the ones who will be directly um, involved in um, the implementation part, then I think we want to start considering our share, sharing with the other operational communities, um, maybe in two weeks' time. So it will be good that we can, sh uh, again, uh, confirm the latest status at the next CRISP team call. Um, let's see. Yeah, sure. Nurani, please. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, well, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, I think it's, um, I, I don't know how many of you have read the, uh, the, uh, what was circulated on, on the IANA plan. As far as I can see, that's very sensible. I don't think there's anything in there that, that contradicts our principles. But I think also from a process perspective, I think it's good that we circulate our principles first so that it's also clear to everyone that, that this is our view uh, representing the number community, and then we can go forward looking at uh, what the other communities uh, um, have published so that we can see then how our view or our, our principles uh, fit or hopefully fit, <laughs> mm -hmm. or if not, how they don't fit with the, the, the other communities so that we can identify that early and, and work on that together with them. Mm -hmm. But I think your process makes sense. Thanks. Thanks, indeed. Um, and I think once we have the principles, we would be able to um, evaluate um, the plan that has been suggested on the IAM plan, whether this makes sense. From the first look, it looks consistent with the number community proposal. I don't see anything uh, 
contradicting. But when we start working on the principles, we may observe, you know, have other observations. And I think it, based on these principles, it would be also helpful for the IETF community to share our observation and comments about their suggestion. So this might be something that we also want to start working as the next uh, step once we, we have agreement about the principles. So thanks, Narani, for this uh, feedback. Um, if there are no other comments on the status of IPR, I'd like to move to the ICG status. Um, so um, I'll firstly, first quickly share my observation about the comments received to the ICG, and then I welcome any ad feedback that you might have. So as it has been announced from the ICG, there has been over 150 um, comments being submitted. And uh, from a very brief look, I didn't observe any comments that expresses um, concerns specific to the number of um, resources component of the proposal. Um, and then I also see that several members of um, individuals within our community have explicitly um, expressed support for for the proposal, especially on the number of resources component, as well as the observation from the CRISP team, which was very encouraging. And um, I'd also like to share that um, APNIC has actually taken an initiative in reaching out to their region. So compared to the usual um, internet governance related um, discussions, I do I did see quite substantial contributions from this region and overall um, com uh, I think feedback across some um, five RR region was relatively well balanced um, while from the lack LACNIC and AFRINIC region, um, the number of submissions from individual was little less than the other regions. But then again, I did see key organizations um, sharing their observations, so which is a good thing. Um, and um, one thing I'd like to um, highlight um, for our consideration is that there has been a couple of um, comments related to the details of the change in the IANA function operator in the future. So how will this be done and how would coordination between operational communities be done? And some have requested for more details. So while we'd like to see, um, well, I think we'd like to see what feedback the ICG will get back to us on this. Uh, before making you know specific actions on this, but I think this is something that we might want to keep in mind as a, a possible area that might require more work uh, for us. Um, and at the same time, I, I did observe not not all the comments as much as I had expected was simply support for the ICG combined proposal. And a uh, quite substantial number of comments have expressed um, further work, the need for further work on ICANN accountability and um, clear, more, more clear separation between the PTI and ICANN and a couple of um, observations about more clarity on the names related components such as CSC, um, IF. Um, INA function review team, etc. So I did get the impression that if you look at the proposal as a combined integrated proposal, um, there may be needs for further work on this. So again, let's see what the ICG will um, will see as observation. Any any further work needed, not just from us, but from the other operational communities. So that's. Um, my observation about the uh, comments submitted to the ICG. Um, if anyone else have any other observations, comments, feel free to express it. Um, I am not seeing any hands, and I do trust. So I I still haven't seen the transcript. Um, of on the last ICG face-to-face -face meeting in LA. Um, I trust either minutes or um, transcript would be available shortly, so I'd like to um, check on this. 
and perhaps follow up with um, with our NO representatives on anything that needs um, needs attention from uh, or the number community uh, perspective. Um, and so that will lead to. For A, for B, which is um, we have re received a request for um, from an ICG member on compiling the action items and its status for the number community proposal to be submitted to them by um, by the end of um, by the end of day on UTC tomorrow. So UTC 23:59, um, 25th of September. So the idea is to list what are the components that need actions to prepare for implementation on the number of community proposal, and what will be the kind of timing that is uh, required to com complete these actions. For example, does this need to be completed before um, we submit the proposal to the NTIA, or can we wait? For this to be completed uh, before um, NTIA's contract expires, so as a part, as long as we work work on it as a part of the implementation, would this be sufficient? So um, I did circulate a draft of this plan um, to the CRISP mailing list, um, and so I'd like to wait for you. Um, yeah, see if you have any feedback uh, by tomorrow. Uh, UTC 13, um, so 25th of September. So you would have uh, roughly 12 hours from now to uh, share your views if you have anything to add. Uh, at the same time, process-wise, um, this part is pretty much, um, the, the implementation is pretty much um, the responsibility of the RIRs. So I have also requested for feedback from the NROEC. And I'll be compiling any feedback received from the CRISP team and the NREC before uh, making a submission to um, the ICG. Uh, one thing I'd like to um, highlight about an observation that I have made is on the IPR. So um, in terms of the timing of this um, IPR actions to be completed, um, I have actually um, categorized that the IPR principles should be um, developed and agreed by all of the operational communities. So it's not just the numbers community, but the names and the protocol parameters should agree on the principles before um, the transition takes place. So this should be um, defined as a part of the implementation. Uh, however, I personally feel that um, Identifying a specific organization, which organization will be holding the the, the intellectual property rights, um, and any other further details about the IPR, does not necessarily have to be defined um, before the expiry of the the INA, uh, the NTIA contract. So um, even if the contract expires. Um, until we agree on a particular organization as the holder of the IPR among three operational communities, we can still keep the mark within ICANN. And once we agree on the um, on a particular entity that should hold this um, rights, the intellectual property rights, then I think um, we can go ahead and um, transition this um, this rights, even after uh, all the the other part of the transition has completed and NTIA has um, has uh, expired its uh, contract. So that's my personal thinking, and I'd like to see um, how you you see this. Do you agree with this? Um, way forward, or do you actually feel that all the implementation details, including a specific entity um, as the holder of the IPR, should be um, defined before um, the exp expiration of the contract um, of the NTIA?
Hein. Ronnie, please go ahead. I think I agree with your assessment that if we go back to the proposal text uh, where we lay, uh, lay out what the expectations around the uh, intellectual property rights are, uh, it does say that it is the preference of the internet number community that all relevant parties agree to these expectations as part of the transition. Um, but I don't think uh, there is, um, and it says that uh, in a couple of, of places, so it doesn't say anywhere that, uh, and we have these discussions at the time, that the, the transfer of the intellectual property rights don't need to happen at the transition. Uh, we can, because we didn't want this to become an obstacle in the uh, in the transition. But the 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 groundwork needs to be done, so to speak. All the parties need to uh, agree on on um, on these things, and then uh, it is a matter of implementation. Um, simply. Thanks. Thanks, Rani. Um, so it seems that uh, we are agreeing with each other, and uh, but I think the participation um, from the Christian team members at this call is quite limited. So I will highlight this point and specifically ask for feedback uh, from the Christian team members on the mailing list and see if um, other members who are not at this call have other comments. And uh, thanks, Michael, for your comment on the chat as well, and good to see that um, you agree with this as well. Yeah, I guess we we should at least agree on the principles among the operational community to give a certain level of assurance um, to the NTIA as well as uh, ultimately to the U.S. Congress. So this is important, but the rest can actually happen even after the transition. So good to see that at least um, those among us who are at the call um, agree with this approach. Um, so, if there are no other comments around the ICG status, um, I'd like to just um, yeah, move to the next agenda point on the GAO report. Um, so, just to confirm on the, the ICG status and the next step will, will be, um, so I'll be compiling the feedback from the CRISP team and then um, uh, make a submission to the ICG at 23.59 UTC tomorrow, uh, 25th of September. So let's go to the GAO report. Um, so um, I haven't really looked at the report in full detail, but um, from a quick observation, I generally find the observation, um, the report of the GAO to be um, accurate in key important points. And it's uh, it's helpful that they have actually suggested the NTIA to um, to consider certain points and highlighted um, key elements of the proposal for evaluation, so that NTIA would have uh, uh, you know a certain guidance on how they would um, evaluate the proposal. This also serves as a really helpful reference. And what would be the kind of issues? that would get attention from the U.S. Uh, government, which may help us um, in the coming Congress hearing in November if we have to explain about our component of the proposal to the U.S. government. Um, I did observe very minor um, um, fact, uh, which is not really uh, consistent with our actual um, arrangement around the ASO. So in the GAO report, it says that RIRs are the representatives in the ASO, whereas in reality, it's the RIR communities who are the representatives of the ASO. It might seem as a trivial from the people outside our community, but it's quite a, an important um, difference to ensure that um, it's not just the ASO is not just accountable to the RIRs, but accountable to each of the five RIR uh, communities. So um, I am planning to um, get back to the GAO that uh, this fact is not correct and, um, you know, as a reference in for their consideration if they would um, 
make changes to the report, while it's ultimately up to them whether they make a decision to uh, make a revision to the report. So that's my observation, and I'd like to see if um, anybody else have any other comments, um, especially um, if you observe any facts that needs correction, it would be good to point out to them at at once rather than coming back to them one after the other. So I welcome um, any feedback that you might have. And thanks, Nurani, for expressing your comment on the chat. Um, I don't know if all of you had time to take a, a read at this. And again, um, I've actually requested for our feedback on the CRISP team mailing list. So I'll see if any other comments from the CRISP team members who are not at the call. So, Sumi, I haven't had enough time to really look at it in detail. So, um, I think I'll take a look and then provide comments and everything through the mailing list. Oh, excellent. Thank you very much, Michael. That would be very helpful. So let's then go to um, Agenda 6, um, so communication on the number committee proposal as well as the stages of Im implementation. So I think from this point onward, uh, we're you know, um, making very good progress in terms of preparing implementation of the SLA, the review committee, and well, IPR, this needs coordination with others, but then we're making an okay progress. And so we all we would like to put more and more priority on explaining um, the spirit of the number community proposal and making sure that the um, the people outside the number community understand uh, the intention of our proposal accurately as well as um, the implementation details, um, including potential risks that may be perceived and make sure that there are no misunderstandings um, about how um, those risks could be mitigated. Um, so we would like to, of course, prepare for the Congress hearing um, in November as well as, um, I don't know if there is anything that we need to Explain on um, and outreach on ICANN 54 meeting in Dublin, but I think it would still be good to have an opportunity to um, share our status at the meeting if possible. So I'll stop here and see if people have any comments, suggestions about how we could be prepared. So for the Congress hearing, um, what Nurani and I have um, briefly discussed is that it may be worth um, um, you know, reviewing the GEO report as well as the past hearings that happened this year and uh, try to simulate the possible questions that we might receive from the Congress and prepare response. Um, and in preparing the response, it would be very, very helpful if we could um, uh, receive support from um, the RIS staff, as well as colleagues from um, the Erin region. Um, and Michael, since you are the call, um, yeah, if Erin would be able to, um, sh you know, support us since you would probably, you're in the best position to know about the climate in the US politics and the Congress, what would be the kind of um, area that um, the Congress members would be interested in. Uh, so that would be the kind of support that I would like to um, request uh, from RIS staff, especially from Erin. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, for um, agreeing to support um, Narani and I. It's very um, encouraging. Narani, please. Thank you. And apologies for taking the floor. Uh, I guess since uh, we we, um, we had a little bit of a um, we don't have great attendance at this call, so. Um, I'll take the opportunity to speak. Uh, uh, some of these things uh, Izumi and I have, have discussed 
uh, in our coordination call just to make sure that we're prepared. But I, for me, I find it important that um, we um, we make sure that we're in sync with the the Chris team, of course, and the number community, and then also the RIR the RIRs because uh, when it comes to a lot of these things, uh, especially now going forward, we're actually talking about implementation. And while Izuma and I can have all sorts of uh, great ideas about how how we think it should be implemented, I think it's really important that um, we we sort of shape those messages in in coordination with the the RIRs. Um, so that's for the hearing part, but also for any other steps moving forward. Um, for the ICANN 54 meeting, um, I sent. Uh, an email to um, Louis and Felice, who the um, NRNC uh, chairs, to ask if we they wanted us to um, to present in that slot. I think that would be good as well. Um, and then I, I also think we should think a little bit about um, what other meetings um, are coming up this uh, this autumn. So. Uh, actually coinciding with a congressional hearing is the right meeting and I'm working with the the right team right crisp team uh, and the uh, the right and CC staff to look at what we want to say there we're certainly going to have a, a session there as well um, but I guess there will be other RIR meetings as, as well and uh, since I think the, the communication part is going to accelerate from here on It'd be good if we really make sure that we're all sort of on message and that we all describe uh, the proposal in the same way. Uh, so yeah, I really appreciate any help we get from the RAR staff. So that's great to hear from from Michael. Thanks. Thanks, Ronnie. And I think a uh, very good point about um, the coming RAR meetings. I believe there will be one on. Uh, in October, um, Aaron meeting, right meeting. I'm not fully um, following the schedule for um, the LACNIC and AFRENIC meeting, but I'm, I'm sure it's coming up um, um, around that time as well, like October, November. And yeah, it would be good to be in sync with the kind of messaging. Um, just for your information, so we've just uh, completed um, a PNIC 40 conference. Um, yeah, two weeks ago. Well, uh, yeah, two weeks ago, and since this meeting was held just before um, the close of comments by the ICG, we our fo um, focus of outreach was um, pretty much the focus of messaging was pretty much on outreaching that to make sure that the community provides feedback, but also to share the status of um, implementation on the SLA and the review committee. I believe that we want to start preparing for um, having a selection of the review committee uh, members at these physical meetings and I understand uh, that the right region have already started um, uh, opening the call for um, the review committee representatives and I think it's something that's worth um, preparing, um, worth to be prepared by the other RIR regions as well if we want this um, this selection to be completed before the NTIA um, gives report to the US Congress. Okay, thank you uh, for your feedback. Um, so John V, I've noted Afrinic meeting is November and LACNIC meeting is in, in um, is actually next week. Okay, um, thanks Esteban. So um, Esteban, do you know if there has been any preparation about the review committee selection at the coming um, LACNIC meeting? Because as I said, I think it would be good to have um, the unpredictability element as much as possible when the NTIA um, gives report to um, the US Congress. So I think it would be more desirable if we are able to list the members, the specific names and the members of the review committee uh, by the time NTIA um, gives the report of the proposal to the US Congress. Uh, Itsumi, I agree with you, but I don't know if this issue will be treated in the next week meeting in Bogota. Uh, I really, I don't know the 
the, the agenda. But but I think that is 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 necessary to to start with the the process of the review committee and and, and to 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 get it done uh, soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, Esteban, do you mind following up with um, the LACMIC team who's um, planning this? I don't know if there's going to be any session that covers this. Um, would you mind to follow up and confirm the status? And then also, it might be too a little bit of a last minute, but maybe raise this point uh, and see if there's anything we can do about this um, within the LACMIC region. Yes, it's two minutes. No problem. Uh, just, just for clarification, I, I know that the Ayana transition will be treated in in the LACNIC meeting, but I don't know if the the, the panel or the session uh, prepared for that will be uh, will be for 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 discuss or for 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 begin the, the the process for the review committee selection. Okay, but the Ayana transition process is is, is in the agenda. And, and, and there are a, a panel to, to discuss and to, to inform the community about the 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 the, 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 the updates and the, the follow in, in in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, noted. I understood that the session is ready, and you're not sure whether the review committee selection is a part of the agenda. Um, I understand, uh, and it would be nice if you wouldn't mind. Um, to follow up with uh, with them and you know give a recommendation, if possible. Uh, so thanks, Esteban. Uh, and I see hand from Nurani. Thanks. I just wanted to give you an update on on uh, what's happening in the broad community on this. Um, and basically, Hunter to Holden, who's the right chair, came up with a proposal that he circulated on the corporation working group, and. Um, which is a proposal which, which I personally think is a very pragmatic one, but of course each region needs to find something that works for them. Um, but given that um, there was there, there have been um, signals about um, that basically it would be good to get uh, as, as much as possible in place uh, before the implementation. To make to 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 show that there will be no last minute surprises and to show that there are processes etc that work. Um, therefore, there have been discussions about trying to find a way of putting a, putting the members in the review committee from the right region in place as quickly as possible. But doing that, but at the same time, of course, it's important to follow those processes that the the, um, the community has developed. So he, uh, to cut a long story short, he, short, he uh, simply proposed that um, the right community would take the NRO number council uh, members, uh, which now has two community elected uh, representatives, take them uh, as representatives to the review committee, given that at the very first stages of the review committee's um, existence, there won't be very much work. Um, and then have a third um, member that's appointed, that is the RIP NCC, a RIP NCC staff member that would be appointed by the RIP NCC executive board. And to simply do that, to put in place three representatives as quickly as possible, the NRO NC has a very long, well-established process and they're all um, well-respected members of the community. Uh, and by doing that, we'll have these people in place very early. And then at the same time, we agree on a method for selecting the review committee members um, long term. So that's how the RAP community is dealing with it. Personally, I, like I said, I think it's a very pragmatic one. Apologies. And um, so that might, ju might just be, be useful to know for the other communities as you move forward. Thanks. Thanks very much, Nurani, for sharing this. Indeed, I think especially um, for the communities that just that might you know that might not have too much time to consider the process, um, it might be something that's uh, worth considering it um, in the interest of moving forward in a pragmatic way. So uh, thank you very much, um, Michael. Do you happen to know the stages uh, within the Erin region?
Yes, hi, Zumi. Um, actually, that's a good point that you all raise, and I'm going to um, I'm going to see in terms of the agenda for the Aaron meeting. I don't believe that we had anything with regards to the review committee on the agenda, but um, seeing how we want to get something in sooner rather than later, uh, it would probably make sense. I'll I'll chat with the people here, and then what I can do is I can update the uh, the mailing list in terms of um, what we might be doing in terms of the review committee uh, member selection. Mm, thank you very much. Excellent. Um, and uh, John Vier, I believe that uh, Afrinic meeting is still ahead, so maybe you don't have anything concrete at this stage. But um, if you have any status, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. Just to say that we we are still uh, working. Uh, you will get back to you um, maybe after. Uh, after next meeting, after after next meeting, because we are still working on the on uh, with uh, other members, and then we'll uh, come back to you with updates uh, after uh, after next meeting in November. Thank you. Oh, thanks very much, Jean Vier. And I think um, compared to, for example, LACNIC um, and Aaron region. Um, November is still a little bit ahead. Uh, so. If you could also recommend this approach of trying to make you know make use of this Afrinic meeting opportunity to um, have selection for the review committee member, um, it would be uh, really helpful. Would you um, consider consider um, sharing this message to whoever's um, planning this session within the Afrinic meeting? Yes, <coughs> Madam. As I say, um, we we will come back. So we we'll come back to you with um, with updates. We uh, about uh, the review the review committee uh, update about uh, review committee. Uh, we we'll come back to you with uh, updates because we are still um, uh, working on the process internally. Uh, I think we. Uh, Yes, uh, it's on the other. Is as uh, as Alan is saying, uh, we'll put on the agenda during the afternoon meeting. So mm, okay. we'll come back to you uh, with update. Okay, understood. Thank you very much, John Bia, um, for this. So I think uh, we're pretty clear about the current stages about the review committee um, across the region. So that's good, and. Um, so that's one communication plan uh, rele relevant to the RIR. So thank you again, Nurani, for raising this. And I also want to add um, something um, for ICANN 54, uh, which is it just depend on the progress of the IPR consideration. But since all the operational community key members is likely to be at ICANN um, Dublin meeting. I wonder if it's worth having an opportunity to discuss about IPR principles or um, any other issues related to IPR at this um, at this face-to-face -face meeting. Um, I mean, at this stage, we don't have anything concrete since we don't have the principles ready. But I assume that it will be ready by before the ICAM meeting. So um, what do you think about this idea? Is it something that's worth considering, or is it something that's a little bit difficult to um, to make a decision at this stage? OK, thanks, Nurani. So that makes sense. Um, I see people agreeing this. So um, yeah, so once we have the principles, um, you know, the draft principles, and have a relatively better idea about um, our approach, let's uh, suggest this to the IETF and the CWG um, stewardship, and uh, set up a meeting um, face to face. Okay, great. So I think I've covered um, pretty much what I wanted to discuss at this call. Um, um, and before I go to 
confirm the date of the next meeting. Does anybody have any other issues that you'd like to comment or raise before we close the meeting? If not, then um, I believe our next call will be on the 8th of uh, October in two weeks' time. And apologies this time for uh, an irregular um, date. Uh, so it should have been yesterday, but due to this um, unavailability, uh, we just changed the meeting uh, to today. But then from now on, we will be back to the regular call schedule. So the two weeks meeting, the meeting in two weeks time will be on Thursday, and then the meeting that will further follow up from that will be on Wednesday. So um, thanks everyone for joining the call and have a nice day um, depending on which part of the globe you're in. Thank you everyone for speaking to you. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you everyone. Bye bye. Thank you.